Welcome to the Real Estate Syndication Show. Whether you are a seasoned investor or building a new real estate business, this is the show for you. Whitney Sewell talks to top experts in the business. Our goal is to help you master real estate syndication. And now your host, Whitney Sewell. Bedford's cost segregation specializes in generating significant tax savings via their engineering-based studies for commercial real estate clients nationwide. Founded in 2002, Bedford is one of the largest independently owned cost segregation providers in the country with over 14,000 studies completed to date in multiple offices throughout. The most important decision ownership can make when incorporating cost segregation within their real estate portfolio is selecting the right provider. With only 43 certified cost segregation professionals nationwide, Bedford is proud to employ eight of them and takes the quality of their people as seriously as their studies. Every certified cost segregation professional has passed a rigorous test combining knowledge of technical engineering issues, legal tax issues, ethics standards, and requires a strict level of prior work experience to be eligible. Bottom line, not all cost segregation providers are created equal. So be sure to take the decision seriously from the beginning to protect yourself for years to come. Please contact Bedford's Business Development Director, Frank Judici, to learn more. This is your daily real estate syndication show. I'm your host, Whitney Sewell. Today, our guest is Trevor West. Thanks for being on the show, Trevor. Thank you very much, Whitney. I'm very grateful to be here. Trevor is a former Air Force Special Operations Analyst who approaches real estate and life through desire, discipline, and a positive attitude. He is a firm believer in the magic of thinking big and is leaning forward in the apartment syndication space to put him and his team's first apartment building under contract. His goal is to lean and ex- lead an extraordinary life and create generational wealth for himself and those around him through real estate syndication. Trevor, thank you again. Or first off, thank you for your service. Uh, I'm always grateful uh, for the men and women who uh, are, are willing to volunteer to put their, their life on the line for our, for our country and protect us. So thank you for that. And also thank you for just being on the show. And, and uh, I just uh, love your bio and, and uh, just, you know, the positive attitude. Uh, I think it's so important. But, you know, let's jump into that. Give us a little about your background and, and just your desire to get in the syndication, syndication business. Yeah, absolutely. Um, again, super grateful to be here. Thank you for inviting me on the show. Um, you know, as you mentioned, I, I joined the Air Force shortly after high school. Um, I didn't want to go to college. So I went in, you know, originally wanted to do special forces, but, you know, colorblind versus, you know, along with some other things just kind of prevented me from doing that. So the next step was I want to do the next coolest thing. So that was, you know, Intel analyst. Um, and, you know, Continuing with that mindset and that drive to be the best, um, I went and assessed for a special operations unit where I spent the majority of my time in the Air Force working with special forces. Um, you know, just to mention Ashton Mulverick, who was actually on this show prior to this, um, and, you know, working through a lot of the challenges that come along with being in a high stress environment at a young age taught me that, you know, there's, there's more to life. And there's more that I can do than, you know, being in the Air Force was an amazing opportunity. But going in with the mindset of I'm going to do 20 years and then start my life, that just wasn't in the cards for me. You know, a lot of people say, well, when I retire or I'm after the 10 year mark, so I might as well just do 10 more. And that just, I I couldn't jive with that type of thinking. So I ended up joining the local rugby team and on a catastrophic day, I ended up snapping my leg. And, you know, being an extremely extroverted person, yeah, um, being an extremely extroverted person, I'm always around people. I'm always positive and and wanting to be around others. So when I broke my leg, my three roommates at the time who had always spent my time with, they ended up deploying. So it was just me alone with my thoughts, burning through Netflix. And then I just had an insane and I'm super grateful for having an extreme mindset shift. I was like, I really got to start figuring this out for myself. So I, it started with financial intelligence, building my financial IQ that quickly turned into personal development. And then, you know, just like so many others, Rich Dad, Poor Dad um, was a book that I read. And it just like, whoop, 
real estate is exactly where I want to be. As I mentioned before, I didn't want to go to college. I wanted to build something for myself. Um, so I started just learning and burning through books, learning as much as I could. And then, you know, the next thing everyone always talks about is action. You have to put it to action. So uh, three months later, I went out and bought my first property, a uh, triplex. And ever since then, I've just seen the power that's behind real estate and what it can really do for your life. And, you know, money's, money's not the cause, it's the result. And it's a tool that can promote a certain type of lifestyle, not just for yourself and your family, but for others around you, which is exactly why apartment syndication was the next step for us. Nice. No, I'm grateful for that. Uh, just showing us how you got to where you're at now. I love the, just obviously the military mindset. I talk about that a lot. Uh, just when I'm speaking somewhere about how the military just gave me that never give up mindset, you know, um, and, and I love how you talked about, you know, placing you in high stress uh, environments at a young age and how that taught you so much. And I can relate to that as well. Uh, and, um, so you couldn't see doing that for 20 years. And, and so you started looking, right? I mean, what, what else, you know, can I m make more for myself or, you know, of myself and, and, but you know, the uh, incident of breaking your leg, man, that, you know, made your roommates take a different route than you did, right? Uh, you know, they were deployed and, and, um, and so you found some time on your hands. So, you know, three months though, after, you know, just learning, putting it into action, you had your first property. Uh, give us a few details about that property. Uh, and then I want to jump into, to, you know, why you want to move into the syndication space as well. But, you know, three months into that first deal, how did you do that? Yeah, absolutely. So just learning as much as I could. One of the things that always resonated with me is you can read all the books and all the articles, but you're not going to actually learn until you start doing and, you know, being in the military, action is, if you're not taking action, something's wrong. If you're not taking action, something, um, someone could potentially get hurt. So um, I went out a military VA loan. I was just, as we mentioned uh, before we started the podcast, is I'm located just south of Raleigh. And I was bound and determined to find a property in Raleigh because, you know, the, the market was just insane. But I quickly realized after walking 15, 20 properties, I wasn't going to make any money. So I started looking in other markets down in Fayetteville and the surrounding submarkets there. And I found a triplex. It had been converted to a triplex from two different houses. And the guy, the, the seller was an older guy trying to liquidate, trying to just go and travel with his wife. And they'd been on the market for about 550 days. Um, it was in a more rural pocket of, of the submarket of Fayetteville. But I was like, you know, this, this looks like it could be a, a good opportunity based on what I had already learned about running the numbers. So went in, um, negotiated a price at the 1% rule. Some of you, some of the listeners are familiar with that. And um, when the VA came in and did their appraisal, they couldn't find any multifamily properties in the area, which significantly dropped the appraisal price, which the seller, seller agreed and fixed all the, the property or uh, fixed all the required repairs. And I walked into a cash flowing property and I actually deployed. And um, I, one of the biggest lessons I learned from that property is never let the seller manage your property after you're, you're gone. Because what had happened was he had already had a pre-existing relationship with the tenants on the good old boy system of, hey, don't worry about this month. Worry, we, you can pay me later. And that just spiraled into a number of different um, different problems because he shut off the utilities for that tenant and they were struggling. They had a brand new baby. So um, I guess one of the main lessons that I'd like to transfer from that property to apartment syndication is management is key. Um, having a stellar property manager can make or break a deal because at the time I was losing money because he was letting people slip on their payments and things of that nature. Nice. So you know, now that you've, you know, you've done the triplex and now you're, uh, you're learning about the syndication business or why, uh, why syndication? Why not, you know, keep growing uh, with smaller multifamily like you're doing? Um, so from like economics aside, apartment syndication just aligns with who I am as a person. And when I first got into the personal development side of things, I read a book called Black Hole Focus. And the premise of the book is how intelligent people can create a powerful purpose for their life. And it runs you through all these different exercises about, you know, 
setting your core values, who you are as a person. And for me, it was consistency, long-term self-respect, achievement, influence, and living my happiest life. So apartment syndication really is all of those things. I get influence because I'm raising capital through investors. I am achieving because once we get our first deal under our belt, then that just compounds into the next thing. And it's just a win-win for everybody. Being that positive person that I choose to be, you know, I win, my investor wins, the community wins because they get safe and affordable housing. And it really is something that you can just create. Why, why our, our goal? So um, we'll probably talk about it in a minute, but surround myself with a positive team. A lot of syndicators I see are, you know, just doing it on their own. And that's awesome. And I can so respect that. But myself and my two partners can kind of spread the responsibility out a little bit. So now we are working together towards one common goal. And through syndication, it just, it aligns so well to building a business that we can make last. We don't have to go out and buy um, 50 duplexes to get to reach our 100 unit goal. We can go buy a 30 unit and then an 80 unit and then a hundred plus. And it's something that creates that true generational wealth. If, when you get into real estate at first, everyone talks about generational wealth. This is how it starts. Yes, that's where it starts, but it doesn't have to stay at the duplex and triplex. You can absolutely build upon that and it creates something that is truly going to last past the days that I'm on this planet. Nice. Well, you know, just given, you know, obviously your bio and different things you've talked about, about being positive and now, you know, just surrounding yourself with a positive team, you know, all those things uh, is so important, by the way. I'm grateful that you brought that up. And, and I want to jump ahead just a little bit into some questions I typically ask, but one is, um, you know, I've been asking you know, entrepreneurs, you know, just about self-discipline. And I feel like, you know, in your case, you know, the military has probably played a role in that. I know it did for me, uh, law enforcement, different things, different training, right? You know, that it was crucial that you were disciplined. Uh, you know, you, you had to be disciplined. Well, I mean, like, like you said, uh, what was it you said in the military? Uh, if you're not taking action, like somebody's going to get hurt, right? Uh, and so, you know, you have to be disciplined. I have to be disciplined in taking action. Um, but, you know, what about you though? How did you how do you, how did you gain that high level of self-discipline? It was, so when I do anything, I just go all in. So when I had that mindset shift, it was like, everything is this. And it really is. Um, when I look around at other people and how they're living their life and the time that is spent. So one of my mentors actually says that there's three different ways you can use your time. You can spend it, you can share it, or you can invest it just like money. So whenever I'm employing my time, I break it down into those three categories. And if I'm spending it, then I'm doing something that I probably shouldn't be doing. I should be either sharing it with people that I care about, investing it into something that's going to promote my lifestyle. So it was just, I have, I have to get up before everybody else gets up because I still have a W2 job. When I'm in the Air Force, I still got to go in and perform. So when is the best time for me to be able to get that done? And it's in the mornings. Goal setting has been extremely important and crucial to this journey because without goals, I have no idea where I'm going or how I'm going to get there. Yogi Berra said, if you don't know where you're going, you might not get there. And that's, that's been something that I've used as a driving force to, to keep me on this path that I'm on. And desire and discipline, I, I am a true believer that just those two things can get you whatever you want in this life. Because life is so important, especially when you're sharing it and investing it in things that are, that are important to you. So I, I would say desire and discipline, um, just being able to understand that by employing my time in the right direction, I can have whatever this world provides or whatever this world has to offer. I'm glad you mentioned I mean, you, like you're still working full time while still making this happen. I did the same thing and it's extremely tough. Um, you know, for a long period of time. And, and so can you give us a, maybe a couple of daily habits that you're very disciplined about that, that you can see pushing you towards success? Yeah, absolutely. And I was just actually thinking about this the other day. Um, one of the, the, the smallest little things, brushing my teeth at the end of the night, you know, sometimes I would do it, sometimes I wouldn't, but just brushing my teeth at the end of the night is, a, is one little thing that I can compound every day. And then making my bed. 
I make my, the moment my feet hit the ground, I make my bed because no matter what day I have, whether it's terrible or whether it was an awesome day, I can come home and see that my bed is made. And I started the day off disciplined and ready to go, ready to attack the day. Um, so those are probably just the really small things that you might think are inconsequential, but truly when you think of the compound effect of what those do for your day, um, it's, it's those two things that, that keep me going. <laughs> nice. I do both of those things as well. <laughs> That's interesting. So what's, what's been the hardest part of this journey towards syndication, Trevor? The hardest part I would say is being taken seriously. Um, you know, when I, when I get on the phone with a commercial broker and, you know, I'm still working through um, speaking to this intelligently because I'm, I'm still putting the pieces together, um, getting taken seriously by, you know, people who have many, many years in the business. So what I've done and especially what my team has done is since we're able to spread that responsibility, since I'm investor relations, I'm dealing with all of the, the relationships, my partner, Skylar, he does all of the underwriting. He's the numbers guy. And his fiance, Olivia, she does all the management. She manages the managers, the schedules, things like that. So by being able to spread out that responsibility, I'm able to dive in more to the subject matter and hone my craft a little bit more when I'm speaking with these professionals who have a number of years in the business. Um, and I guess another part of that is just underwriting during COVID. And it's just extreme challenge not knowing or not having the experience to underwrite pre-COVID, how conservative is conservative or how conservative is too conservative to where we're walking ourselves out of deals. So definitely one of the things that we're taking action on is just reaching out to people who have more experience in underwriting. That way they can share their knowledge and expertise and pass it on to us so we can learn the, the tricks of the trade, especially during a time that's unprecedented for at least my lifetime. What, uh, what's a way that, that you've recently improved your business that we could apply to our business? It's definitely that team mentality. It's because, you know, some of the syndicators that I've been talking to, especially new ones, the ones who are excelling have a number of team members that they're working with. The ones who are, this is crazy. I have so much to do. I still have to handle my regular life and build this business all at the same time are the ones who are trying to do it solo. Um, I think understanding that it's not about the money, especially for newer syndicators, especially for those who don't have a deal under their belt. It's not about the money, as I mentioned earlier, but it's about the experience. It's about getting in and building long lasting relationships with people that you know, like, and trust that is going to be the difference between somebody who is struggling to get that next deal, struggling to put their first deal under contract versus the people who are leveraging out their time and leveraging out other people's expertise. What's your best source for meeting new investors right now? It is my phone. Um, I have just gone through friends and family. Um, everybody says friends and family. So just going through and just getting on the phone, even if it's somebody that I haven't talked to in a number of years, they've definitely been following me on social media. They definitely hear about all the real estate things that I'm doing. Um, so I can kind of, it's almost a warm start to the people that follow me on social media. So I just pick up the phone and I go through uh, people who have either liked or commented or just people that I've talked to in the past, um, you, utilizing those relationships to see um, who they might know who might be interested in what I'm doing. Could you give a couple just details for the listener just a, about that conversation? How do you approach that or approach that call? So this person knows what Trevor's doing now. They probably know Trevor is, you know, being in the military and maybe it's a shock that he's in real estate now, you know, so we'll walk through that just, just briefly about, you know, how that, what that conversation looks like. Yeah, absolutely. So I usually will just start with a little bit of, you know, small talk. Generally, I know these people and I know some detail about them. So I talk them through of just, hey, how's it going? Oh, I heard that you're into this or this and that. And I will try to let real estate be a natural next topic. Oh, what are you into? Oh, this is what I'm doing. And from there, um, I will you know, reference the things that I've done in the past. So the duplexes, the triplexes, what I'm moving towards. 
And then I will move into not necessarily saying, hey, do you want to invest? Because that's a little abrasive. I think that the best approach is saying, hey, do you know, do you happen to know anybody who might be interested in an opportunity like this? Because one of the things that I've been, that was challenging for me, picking up the phone was nerve wracking, is I'm asking for money. And I think a lot of people on your show have talked about, don't think of it as asking for money, but think of it as offering an opportunity because that's truly what it is. And that's really where the core of this starts. So just naturally asking, do you happen to know anyone? And um, actually went to a meetup, a virtual meetup where one of the individuals had said, um, the, the right ones will self-select. So I've been going off of that um, premise because if I say, hey, do you know someone? Well, actually I happen to have, and then we can move on from there. And then I will direct them to my social media, direct them to my website, and then we can continue the conversation. It doesn't necessarily need to be a hard close right then and there, but hey, this is generally what we're looking to do. Would you be interested in the future or know somebody who is? Number one thing that's contributed to your success. Definitely the positive attitude, um, the, the roadblocks and the, the different things that we've had to overcome, especially when you bring three minds together. Yes, we're able to go further, faster, but there's definitely some friction points when it comes to my partner, Skylar, is very risk averse. I am not so much. So there's definitely some grinding there. So understanding that you need to stay positive and having that team mentality and understanding your teammates. So one of the things that we actually did when we first, we were like apartment syndication is what we're going to do and what our focus is going to be. But we need to know each other just a little better. So we did the DISC profile, um, the personality assessment, and we went through on our very first meeting, we went through and read each person's profile in detail through the entire thing. And you can start to pick apart, oh, this is why you handle situations like this, or this is why you like the finer details of things. And I can understand that. And you can understand that I'm a feeler. I play off of other people's emotions. So understanding who your core team is, if you are in close quarters with them and knowing their personality profile has been a real benefit to us. How do you like to give back? I like to give back by, so I have actually separated from the air force. I'm a full-time real estate agent, part-time investor. And we, at my firm, we are primarily focused on working with investors. So we have interns who are um, at Fort Bragg in the army that will join the career skills program or the skills bridge program, which gives them six months at the end of their enlistment to come out and work as an intern at five pillars, which is the team that I work with under EXP. And one of the things that I do to give back is just teaching them how to invest, teaching them about personal development and what they can do to set themselves up because a lot of them are 22, 23, just getting out of the Air Force or Army and are not really sure exactly what they're going to do, but doing just a little bit to give them some kind of foundation to look towards the future. Nice well Trevor, grateful for your time, how you gave back to us today and, and just really sharing your story uh, of staying positive and, and things you've learned, what the military's, you know, helped you to gain. Just, you know, I loved how you said too, uh, your money is not the cause, it's the result and just surrounding yourself with that positive team. I know you talked about, you know, like just being a team sport and bringing everyone up um, and how you all relate as a team and how that's pushed you forward. Uh, and just the difficulties of being taken seriously, you know, when on the phone, how you're working through that and, and getting on the phone, growing your investor base too, with people that you already know uh, is just a great, great tip. I mean, a lot of times we, we have a list of investors that uh, we, we haven't even thought about yet, uh, you know, on our phone. Uh, and so Trevor, uh, grateful for that. Uh, tell the listeners how they can get in touch with you and learn more about you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, my social media, you can find us or my company is called Hive Community Investments, H-Y-V-E. And you can find us at hiveci.com or on my Instagram, Better Trevor or on Facebook at Trevor Brand. Thank you for listening to the Real Estate Syndication Show, brought to you by LifeBridge Capital. LifeBridge Capital works with investors nationwide to invest in real estate, while also donating 50% of its profits to assist parents who are committing to adoption. LifeBridge Capital, making a difference, one investor and one child at a time. 
Connect online at www.lifebridgecapital.com for free material and videos to further your success. 